This week marks the 30th anniversary of the Elder Scrolls franchise. These games were incredibly important to my childhood, and so it feels right to commemorate this occasion with a video on Verigan. Though these games are about heroes of prophecy, portals into hell and dragon slaying, I can't help but get distracted by tangential treasures like these. Enjoy. Long before Bethesda made an attempt to go to space, space came to them. When Skyrim first got Steam Workshop support, Bethesda and Valve decided to celebrate this collaboration with a mod bringing a wonder of aperture science to Tamriel. Anyone who's played through Portal 2 will know this little guy, and he makes a companion in Skyrim too. I am the spaceborn, as foretold, in space. Ooh, ooh. Hi, 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 hi. Where are we going? Where are we going? Hi, lady. Where are we going? Where are we going? Let's go to space. <laughs> are we in space yet? Let's hold up. Gotta go to space. Gotta go to space. Wanna go home? Okay, Wanna go home? maybe Wanna he's go home? a bit Wanna annoying. Go home? Wanna go home? Goodbye. Oh, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Space. Yeah. <laughs> go to space. I've played a lot of Oblivion over the years, but I think I've only done a couple of these quests. They're not hidden on purpose, they're just annoying to unlock and quite frankly pointless to do. Master training quests. Once your skill passes past 70 in any skill, your normal NPC trainers have nothing else to teach you and so will recommend you to train under a master instead. By the time you're reaching 70 in your skills you've likely finished the game and are unstoppable anyway, but if you do seek them out, they'll give you some really interesting tasks. Here's a few of my favourites. Welcome to my home underground. <laughs> Sindarian, master of alchemy and collector of Nern roots, will train you advanced potion making only if you give him some rare bottles of wine. Master of alteration, tooth in sea, will require you to breathe underwater with him for three hours, which is tedious and weird. Master of speechcraft, Tandilway, sends you to speak with all 19 of Cyrodiil's beggars, and Destruction Master Bralsa Aldaran wants you to get her 20 bear pelts. Oh come on, what is this, World of Warcraft? On Vardenfell, the Daedric Prince Boethia's shrine lies in ruins. Boethia wants the player's help rebuilding it, and so has a tantalising offer. Will you rebuild my shrine, mortal? Restore it in all its glory? Accomplish this, and I will reward you. You will be the bearer of Goldbrand, my sword of legend. After performing the short couple of tasks needed, and waiting a whole 21 days for the sculpting to finish, we receive Goldbrand, an ancient golden katana created by dragons, and it does loads of damage. Entirely unrelated to this, in the Vivek Mages Guild, is a high elf called Cyrilonwe. If you're a vampire, she has a unique hidden quest, to kill her rival Shashev and to take his key. Now, get this, if you were to possess Goldbrand, Shashev's key, and precisely 11,171 gold in your inventory, no more or less, you'll get a message, and Goldbrand will be transformed into its secret, even more powerful variant, Elton Brand. Now this is perhaps the most ridiculous secret in these games, so what's going on? Well, Elton Brand is a reference to Elton Brand, a former basketball player. Shashev's key is a reference to Mike Shashevsky, Brand's coach. The gold amount is thought to be a reference to the birthday of developer Mark Nelson, who supposedly implemented this to begin with. I think only he knows the real story of Elton Brand, but I think it's just him making his mark on his world. A true easter egg. Now you've likely heard of this person, the Ebony Warrior. If you're the kind of player who likes to clear out every dungeon, perform every menial task and level up all of your skills, your level will go past the 30s, 40s and then 50s, and you'll start seeing new creatures you've not seen before, like revered dragons and nightmaster vampires. And all the way up at level 80, the Ebony Warrior will seek you out. The time has come. Fighting this man atop the last vigil is incredibly tough. He's highly resistant to, well, everything, has incredibly well enchanted gear, and is very tall. 
A sneaky tactic many people try to use is with Merun's Razor, a Daedric artifact that has a tiny chance of killing its opponent in one hit. This can work, but the proc rate is just under 2%, and he, thanks to his many perks, has a 10% chance to reflect a hit, making this maybe the game's most creative method of suicide. But anyway, whether or not you kill him, you'll never find any clues as to his identity, despite him being one of the most powerful enemies in the entire franchise. Over the years, this has led to a lot of speculation by the fanbase, leading to the popular theory that the Ebony Warrior is a manifestation of the Red God deity Raymond Ebonarm, a war god who appears to mortals as a black knight in full ebony. Now, there is no actual evidence for this, and Ebonarm's arm is supposed to be fused with his sword, hence his name, and we definitely don't see that in Skyrim, but I do think it's a cool idea nonetheless. Oh, and it's not quite related, but Ebonarm's first mention outside of Daggerfall came not too long ago, when his law books were ported into a couple of the Creation Club creations. So go him. Now this is one of my favourite places in Cyrodiil, and I always make sure to visit it. During the main questline for Oblivion, players are taken to Cloud Ruler Temple, an ancient stronghold of the Blades, the late Emperor's personal guard. It's set up right up against the Geral Mountains, and marks the edge of the game world, and so you could reasonably assume that there's nothing else up here. But, just over to the west is another structure. Over here the mountains are sloped very harshly, but there's a sort of stony ridge, providing a path along what the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages site calls the Northern Stairs. And at the top of these stairs is a chest, and inside this chest is nothing in particular. I found this place when I was young, and at the time I was convinced that I was missing something. Maybe you need to come back at a certain day? Nope. Maybe you need to cast a certain spell? Nope. Maybe you need to place a certain item inside? No, nope. it's just a normal chest. Ah well. What that chest does remind me of though, is an incredibly interesting way of creating black soul gems during the Shade of the Revenant. This is a celestial event where the necromancer's moon eclipses the planet Arke. Arke is the god of death, and the moon represents Manimarko, god of undeath, and so when the planet of death can no longer be seen, foul things can be performed in the shade of the moon. This happens once every eight days, and though sadly you can't track these celestial movements with your naked eye, a bright purple light will appear in select places during the eclipse. These select places are necromancer altars, there's one just outside a cave called the Dark Fissure, not far south of Shadenhall. One near Fort Isterus, down the road from Skingrad. One in Fort Lynchall, deep in Colovia. And one by the Aeliad Ruin Wendelbeck. Placing a Grand Soul Gem into one of these altars at the right time of week, and hitting it with a Soul Trap spell, will convert it into an empty Black Soul Gem. Black Soul Gems are unique in that they can only trap the souls of people, making them much easier to fill, as Cyrodiil's bandit problem is nearly as bad as Skyrim's. Morrowind veterans almost always take this shown route as soon as they get out of Sedanine. It's because it leads to the Samaris Ancestral Tomb, and inside at the back is the Mentor's Ring, a very valuable piece of jewellery, which increases both the wearer's intelligence and willpower by 10. It's really good for low-level spellcasting, and also really lucrative to pawn off but I instead want to focus on whose remains we steal it from. Lord Brin's. In the urn with the ring is Lord Brin's ashes. I've always assumed that it was some kind of quest item, so I've always just taken him with me, then later stashed him somewhere and forgotten about him. But there are no quests, and there are two other named ashes in the game too. The ashes of G. Lingus in Ravel Ancestral Tomb, and the ashes of D. Bryant in the Phallus Ancestral Tomb. None of them serve any purpose, but are instead a tribute to three members of the Elder Scrolls community who sadly passed away before the game saw release. Bethesda ensured that they'd find their way to Vardenfell, in this life or the next. And that's beautiful. They always did do a good job of immortalising their community. Fans of the games were used to beta test their earlier entries, and in doing so, made their names into Tamriel permanently, with the elven god Jephra being named after tester Jeff Grulik, RK being named after tester RK Deutsch, and my personal favourite is the god named after Lawrence Sidlowski, who'd always sign his forum messages at the bottom with quote, also known as the Old Smaug himself. Collectively, these beta testers were called the Council of Wisdom, and I'll leave a link to them down below.
Now, I know I'll get at least one complaint if I don't feature one of the earlier Elder Scrolls games, and that's fine by me, because my favourite character is actually from 1998's The Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, and his name is Erasmo. Why? I'll let him explain. What? Nothing! I'm just doomed! You burnt your legs in the gear room? The pain! Stay calm, Erasmo. I'm looking for a woman named Izara. Have you heard of her? I hear many things. I hear the pipe rumble, the gears turn, and the whistle of the pet bunny. A rat will never hear any women. What? Ghosts? What ghosts? Flash! Ghosts in the lighthouse, shine in the light! Flash, flash, flash! Then, Rasmo! Wake the hell up! Flash? Flash, flash! Calm down, C calm down. How does the orrery work? Erasmo doesn't know! <laughs> Why did Richton send you here to fix it? Ah! Hey man, stop screaming! Have you heard the story of JVK1166Z.ESP? I thought not. It's not a story a Skyrim player would tell you. It's a Morrowind legend. When growing up, I loved hearing about other people's experiences in open world RPGs like these. One day, me and my friends heard one that unfortunately, has stuck with me ever since. JVK was supposedly a secretive plugin file, exchanged only between small message boards and private messages. But if you were to get your hands on it, install it, and boot up Morrowind, it wouldn't work. But if you were to, for some reason, decide to emulate Morrowind via DOSBox, the game kind of would work. Wandering around in this version of the game is very weird. All NPCs related to the main quest are dead, aside from Yagra and Bagan. There's a huge new dungeon called the Citadel, far to the west in the middle of the ocean, and everywhere you go, you're being stalked. Stay in one place for too long, and you'll see him. I won't spoil too much more, but there's a link to this classic story in the description. The way loot works in these games is primarily through what you'd call leveled lists. Through several factors, most importantly the character's level, loot is dynamically distributed throughout the game world, so that rare shiny loot of any kind can be found anywhere, if you're lucky enough. Distributed somewhere in your version of Skyrim though, is something other than simple loot. In one of the thousands of chests is a unique item found nowhere else, a silver candlestick. But despite appearances, this isn't just your normal silver candlestick, and carrying it around with you can cause strange things to happen. The vast, vast majority of candlestick holders will never notice it, but the weather will start to get increasingly unusual, and there'll be something weird going on with the moons. Though what, you can never quite tell. And here's another weird one. The notched pickaxe, the quite famous Minecraft reference found at the top of the throat of the world, won't be there to collect. But it's not gone, it's just been moved. And if you want to get your hands on it, you need to head back down to High Hrothgar. On foot, mind you. Fast travel will lock you out of this. And head to this end of the complex. Open up these drawers, and you'll find a singular flawless diamond. Take it, and they will appear behind you. Thanks for watching, and thank you Bethesda for making these games, and for making me the person I am today. Good luck with number six, and take care. And another thank you to YouTube members Morian, Silux, Nightseeker, Jonathan Bengtson, Riley, Cornpops871, Schoon, Patrick Manhora, Darklord Grimace, Lewis H, Lurend, Sovereign, Cherish, Miffy, and Hydroxyl. Oh, and in case it wasn't obvious, that last one was completely made up. Well, I had to get to number 10 somehow. What do you expect me to do? Play ESO and get one from there? <laughs> I've got standards, you know. More like Elder Scrolls offline.